Hey YouTube, this is Primetime Pokemon. In this video, I'll be sharing some more tips for Pokemon TCG deck building. Specifically, I'll be discussing the different Pokemon types and how many types you should use when deck building. Now, when it comes to the Pokemon TCG, there are 11 different types. Now, that is less than both the games and the anime. On the screen, you can see all 11 types. Nine of these 11 types are available as basic energy. Only colorless and dragon are available as special energy. Now, when it comes to deck building, most competitive decks out there have one basic energy type plus some special energy. When it comes to basic energy, you can use as many basic energy as you'd like in a deck. Special energy, you only can use four of that same card. For the most part, in competitive decks, you're going to see anywhere between about 8 and 13 or 14 total energy cards in a competitive deck. Like I said, most competitive decks out there are going to have one basic energy type and then a couple of different special energy cards, whether that be something like a rainbow energy or a double colorless energy. Now you do see competitive decks out there that have more than one basic energy type in them. And most of those decks will either have a stadium card or an ability on a Pokemon that utilizes both of those basic energy types. Now as far as the types of the actual Pokemon go in your deck, it really doesn't matter. And you can use as many different types as you'd like. The only thing that matters is you have the necessary energy types to use the attacks on those Pokemon. And a lot of decks out there will use a majority of one type, let's say a water type, but then it will utilize other types of Pokemon that require only colorless energy to attack. That way you can use just the one basic energy type and then just add in something like a colorless energy. Now it's also important to think about weaknesses when building your own deck. For example, in my Buzzwool GX deck, a majority of the Pokemon in that deck are fighting type Pokemon. I only use fighting type energy in that deck. But the fighting type Pokemon in my deck, some are weak to grass type Pokemon, some are weak to psychic type Pokemon. That way, if I'm facing a psychic type deck, I can use the Pokemon that are weak to grass and vice versa. That way you always have a chance to win the battle. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a look at the four different decks that I built and are very popular and very good in the TCG right now in the 2018 standard format. I'll take a look at the different types of Pokemon as well as the different types of energy that are used. And I hope that will give you a very good idea of how to build your deck going forward. And there's really not a right answer when it comes to what types work well together and what type of deck that I should build. It's really a personal preference, but again, think about the different types of energy you need to use and think about weaknesses. And if you know the popular decks out there, for example, Gardevoir GX is very popular, you may want to go out and build a metal type deck since Gardevoir GX is weak to metal type Pokemon. But now I'll show all of the popular decks. All right, before I get into the actual decks, here's a couple of cards that can be used in dual type decks. Vikavolt is very popular, and its ability, Strong Charge, says, once during your turn, you may search your deck for a Grass Energy card and a Lightning Energy card, and attach them to your Pokemon in any way you like. Then shuffle your deck. And this card is used a lot with a Tapu Koko GX and a Tapu Bulu deck. So here's a good way to combine Grass and Lightning type Pokemon. And then another popular ability on a card would be Metagross GX. Its Geotech System ability says, once during your turn, you may attach a Psychic or a Metal Energy card from your discard pile to your active Pokemon. So here's a good way to use both Psychic and Metal type Pokemon in the same deck. Like I was talking about, Stadium cards are also a good way to build dual type decks. This one, Aether Paradise Conservation Area, is used with Vikavolt a lot. It says, basic grass Pokemon and basic lightning Pokemon take 30 less damage from the opponent's attacks. It's so like that deck I was just talking about, Tapu Bulu and Tapu Koko are both basic Pokemon, so that reduces the amount of damage those Pokemon take when they're attacked. So now I'll go through the different decks that I've built and just summarize the energy cards used and the different types of Pokemon. 
First up, I can show my Gardevoir GX deck. You can see the deck checklist on the screen. As far as energy cards go in this deck, I use one basic energy type in fairy type, and then I use four double colorless energy. Now the Pokemon in this deck are fairy, colorless, psychic, and fighting. Of course, the main Pokemon in this deck would be Gardevoir GX. Its infinite force move just depends on how many energy are attached to both Gardevoir GX and the defending Pokemon. So I use the double colorless energy if I do have one fairy energy attached to this one to increase the amount of damage when attacking. And then its secret spring ability, it only utilizes the fairy type energy. So that's the main reason I only have one type of basic energy in this deck. And then Sylveon GX, it also utilizes double colorless energy with its fairy wind move as well as its plea GX move. Ideally, you're using Magical Ribbon first to get your hand set up and then putting Gardevoir GX in the active Pokemon spot the following turn and doing damage every single turn. And then here's a look at the double colorless energy. It just provides two colorless energy at once. I have four of these in this deck. And then a couple of Pokemon that benefit from the double colorless energy would be Tapu Lele GX. The main reason to use this card would be for its Wonder Tag ability, but its energy drive move does utilize the double colorless energy. And then Gallade, which the main reason for this card is its ability as well, but its sensitive blade move also utilizes two colorless energy cards. The next deck here would be my Buzzwool GX and Lycanroc GX deck. As far as energy cards go, I use only basic energy for fighting type, and then I use four strong energy, which are essentially overpowered fighting type energy. So this is a majority fighting type deck. And like I talked about in the open, it's important if you're using almost all the same type of Pokemon, that they are weak to two different types of Pokemon. As you can see here, Buzzwell GX is weak to Psychic type Pokemon. And then the next card, Lycanroc GX is weak to Grass type Pokemon. So just depending on the deck you're facing, you can choose which Pokemon is your main attacker. And then here's a look at the Strong Energy. And this just is a Fighting type Energy, but it provides 20 more damage when attacking. And then here is a Stadium card that I use. I do use some Water type Pokemon in this deck, mainly Remoraid and Octillery. I use Brooklet Hill. It says once during each player's turn, that player may search your deck for a basic water Pokemon or basic fighting Pokemon, put it onto their bench, and shuffle their deck. So I use this to get things like Buzzwell GX into play, as well as Remoraid. So that way, it is a good way to get fighting and water type Pokemon into one deck, is by using this Brooklet Hill Stadium card. The next deck that I can talk about here would be my Alolan Ninetales deck. And this deck is mainly a water type deck as far as energy cards go. Only basic water energy and then I use four double colorless energy. The different types of Pokemon in this deck, water, darkness, psychic, and lightning. And many of the Pokemon in this deck utilize colorless energy when attacking. So you can see on this Alolan Ninetales GX, both Ice Blade Ice Path GX and Blizzard Edge can all utilize the colorless energy. Same goes for Alola Ninetales, so you can set it up very quickly, requiring only two energy cards to use Aurora Beam. This card is in the deck mainly for its ability. It essentially prevents all effects of attacks, including damage done to this Pokemon by your opponent's Pokemon GX or EX. Those are the two main water type Pokemon in this deck, and I use Espeon EX as a psychic type Pokemon and I use its Miraculous Shine move. It devolves each of your opponent's evolved Pokemon and put the highest stage evolution card on it into your opponent's hand so I can use a double colorless energy or one water type energy to use this attack. Another card that utilizes a double colorless energy, Zoroark GX. Its Righteous Beating move can do 120 damage when you have a full bench when attacking, but I use this card mainly for its trade ability. And then another card in this deck, this one's a lightning type Pokemon that utilizes a double colorless energy or two water type energy, Flying Flip. This attack does 20 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon. So Tapu Koko, a very popular basic Pokemon you'll see, especially because it also has a free retreat cost. And then a couple of trainer cards that are very good for attaching energy to your Pokemon. And if you're using a dual type deck, this is important as well. Aqua Patch allows you to attach a water energy card from your discard pile 
to one of your bench water type Pokemon. And when you're attacking with Alolan Ninetales GX, you have to discard two energy cards with one of the moves on that card. So this is an easy way to get those energy cards back. Also, if you're using a dual type deck and you want to specifically get a water type Pokemon set up, this is a good way to do it. And then Max Elixir can be very important. It says, look at the top six cards of your deck and attach a basic energy card you find there to a basic Pokemon on your bench. So you can use this if you're using a dual type deck or really any type deck out there. You can quickly set up different types of Pokemon on your bench. The last deck that I can summarize here, and I hope you're finding this useful on strategies for deck building, would be my Golisopod GX deck. Now as far as energy cards go, I use several different types. I only have three basic grass type energy cards, and I have two different special energy cards in this deck. Four double colorless, four rainbow energy. My main attacker in this deck is a grass type Pokemon in Golisopod GX. It really only requires one grass type energy. With the rainbow energy, it can function as a grass type energy. So that's very useful with Glycopod GX. And then Armor Fossil and Crossing Cut GX can utilize the double colorless energy. And then Garbodor with this card is very powerful. It's Trash Alanche Attack. Ideally here you just attach one rainbow energy. So that way you do not have to include any psychic type energy in this deck to use Trash Alanche. And then another Pokemon that I utilize a rainbow energy with would be Tapu Fini GX. Aqua Ring can use any type of energy, but Tapu Storm GX needs a water type energy, then I just use a rainbow energy. And here's a look at the rainbow energy. It says, this card provides colorless energy. While in play, this card provides every type of energy, but provides only one energy at a time. When you attach this card from your hand to one of your Pokemon, put one damage counter on that Pokemon. So you do have to do damage to your own Pokemon when you attach this card. But something very good about this card is that if you have Acerola in your deck, and essentially if you want to retreat a Pokemon in the active Pokemon spot that has a high retreat cost, and you don't have something like a Floatstone or a Guzma, you can do 10 damage to your active Pokemon and then just use Acerola to return that card to your hand. But there are some different decks out there that are very popular in the 2018 standard format. I hope that has given you some ideas on how to build your own deck and just how the different types are utilized together. So there you have it. Thanks everyone for watching. As always, before you go, check out all the links in the description of this video, including links to my blog, Facebook, and Twitter pages. And stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.